What do you Hello. think? What do you think about? Hello. Okay. What do you think about what I'm doing? <laughs> we have a big problem in our house, and that is having an unlimited supply of these small two ounce bottles of paint. So today I'm gonna to create a storage solution that is vertical, that has a small footprint, and where the paints can be super accessible at any time we would need a specific color. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is taking my Craig AccuCut and ripping this five by five sheet of half inch at 18 inches. So I don't know exactly how many bottles I'm gonna have in a row. I don't know how many bottles I'm gonna have all the way down vertically in a row. So I'm gonna lay those out, and when I feel like I have enough, then I'll cut off the excess. From the top, I'm gonna to go two inches, and then after that, I'm gonna go three inches every single bottle. So it'll be two, five, eight, 11, you know the drill. Here is my graphed out, mapped out setup. Two and a half inch spacing here and two and a half inch spacing here. The only difference is these come in two inches, these are inset three and a half because I'm gonna have less bottles. There's gonna be a fourth one here, fifth, six, you know. Right here. I'm gonna paint this. I want to paint like maybe I want to paint this square. Now it is just time to punch the holes in the board. I found that a paddle bit that is an inch and three eighths is the perfect fit for these bottles. Make sure that you don't punch all the way through your board because you could blow out the other side. Drill halfway through, flip your board over, and drill the other halfway through. You will get perfectly crispy, nice circles if you do it that way. Holy moly! And I just realized I missed one after I'm doing this corny little pun about holes. All right, so I busted out the Craig 720 Pro. I don't want any hardware on the face of this. I don't want to see pinholes from nails. I don't want screws, obviously, because that would look horrible. I'm not going to paint it. I'm not going to stain it. I want it to be clear coated and look clean. So the goal is to have nothing showing, sand it up really nice, and just mount it to the wall. So pocket holes are the way to go for that. I've got this guy and that guy. This guy is gonna count for this row. Then there's one row, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11 for the top row. I have currently six, so gotta get some more. So to determine where I'm putting the shelves in here, I just made a little jig here. I stick it in, I flush it up with the bottom of the holes, and then I drive my pocket hole screw. It's nothing fancy. I don't have to measure a bunch of holes every single time. Sometimes you just gotta have a little fun, all right? Now to hang it on the wall, I'm gonna be using a French cleat. If you're familiar with a French cleat, you'll know what I'm doing here with my table saw. But if you're not, all you need to do is take one board, rip it in half, but rip it in half at a 45 degree angle. And then when you go to put the two pieces back together, one is on the wall, one is in the piece, they will match up perfectly and your piece will sit flush on the wall. Paddle bits can be messy, so make sure you sand inside your holes. It doesn't matter what you use to sand. I'm using this attachment that goes to my drill press. Just use whatever you have to make it look nice. Next up was that dead space by the eight ounce bottles. I don't like it. You probably don't like it and you thought I wasn't gonna do anything, but I am gonna do something. I am making paintbrush storage I cut out a couple of squares, cut a hole in them, and glued them straight to the face of the board, and now it is a perfect solution for my paintbrushes. All that is left is to hang it on the wall. Nothing could go wrong. No problem should arise. All you have to do is level it out, make it look nice, slip it on the wall, and nothing should go wrong, right? So I hung it up and I thought it looked great and everything. And I told you guys that I was not gonna stain it or paint it or anything. My wife came in, thought it was great, and she said, but it has to match my desk, so I'm gonna stain it. Ta-da! It's stained, and now the whole office smells like stain because stain just stinks. But I like it, it looks good, it matches the desk. That was not the only thing I had to address, though. I went and added a little bumper right there, so now that they go in, they stay there, because these are a little bit longer, obviously. This top row, because of the French cleat that was up here, was a little inaccessible, so I went and just notched it out a little bit so things can fit in here nicer and neater. That's something that you'll need to pay attention to. A couple of things I wanted to say before this video is over. You can size this down very easily. Reduce all of my numbers by 50% and you can make this smaller. I like this size, I like this design, that's why I went with it, but I have a feeling some people would want something a little bit smaller. Also, 
You can add a backer to this in case you're a messy painter and you get paint all over all your bottles. Feel free to add a back, that way you don't get paint on your wall. If you take my design and butcher it up and cut it up and make it something that is individual to you, that is perfectly fine. Thank you so much to Craig for sponsoring this video. Several of the tools that I use to make this video possible are on sale on their website right now. If you want to know more about all the individual specs of this build, you can go to their website under their plans tab. This is there right now. All the links to all the tools, the plans, and everything will be down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching.